the threat of Tiger Claw is still out there. Blue Star is growing paranoid and senile. What will Fireheart do? Hello, fellow Bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today I have this awesome, epic Warriors book, Warriors of Prophecies. Prophecies Begin Rising Storm by Erin Hunter herself slash himself, m multiple p people, and well, let's get right on to it. So, Fireheart is made deputy in Tigerheart's place, and he is starting to struggle on what to do. Blooster has gone completely paranoid and senile. She is calling all of the cats that she thought were completely loyal to her creators. And she was just super suspicious of everyone, and she, she's saying that Star Clan has turned their back on her and Thunder Clan. So, yeah, it's really bad, and Blue Star's going completely crazy, and Fireheart has to do most of the things that the leader would normally do. Now, while, while that's going on, Cloud Pop. He is now de now an apprentice. Well, Cloud Kid used to be, you know, and he became an apprentice, now he's Cloud Pop. And he's doing a pretty good job of, of doing stuff, and, and Firestar is training him himself. I mean, Fireheart is training Cloudpaw himself. But what's going on is that Cloudpaw decides that it isn't, he doesn't really care about the warrior code, and he thinks that he can just go to a two leg home and um, scavenge some two leg food. And he thinks that since that's easy, why doesn't warriors do it? I mean, What's the bad thing about it? And Firestar sternly says that you, I mean Fireheart sternly says that you can't have two paws in different places, in the Two Leg place and the Thunder Clan camp. You have to be loyal to your clan or nothing. And that's basically it. But Cloudpot does it again and manages to be captured by Two Legs. But two, but Cloudpaw mani, but Cloudpaw is later found by Ravenpaw, the loner who had once been in Thunderclan. And, uh, and Fire so Fireheart and Sandstorm goes along and rescues Cloudpaw from the clutches of the two legs. And Cloudpaw after that is exceptionally loyal to the clan and he is an excellent hunter. Then, a couple moons or sunrises later, a disaster strikes. Because the summer is becoming so hot, a wildfire rips through the clan and kills several of ThunderClan's cats. And the cats have to go along the river and take refuge in, Le in Leopard Star's territory, which is River Clan. And after, the after they stay there for one day, they go back into ThunderClan territory and starts to rebuild the camp. But we lost Yellowfang. The grouchy old shadow, once shadow clan turned thunder clan medicine cat, who had been our dear mentor of Cinder Pelt. Cinder Pelt is now dead, which is kind of sad. And in her dying breath, Yellow Fang reveals all her secrets, including the fact that Broken Star was her son and that she had killed Broken Star herself. And then the book pretty much ends with Fireheart and Blue Star going to a gathering, and at the gathering, the weakened Shadow Clan. It is found out that the weakened Shadow Clan had found a new leader, also known as Tiger Star. And the book pretty much ends like that. And so, several things I want to say about this book. It kind of mirrors growing up, like. Because Fireheart is so unsure, because Blue Star, I think, represents an older person or older her, your mother or your parents, for example. She's going completely senile, and you just don't know what to do. Fireheart doesn't know either. She's, he's expected to step into the boots of a great cat like Blue Star. And you are, after all, expected to do things that you never needed to do before as a child after you become an adult. So I think that kind of mirrors that. But also, Fireheart gets guidance from senior warriors such as Whitestorm, and he is supported by his friend Graystripe. So I feel like that just makes it a little bit better, and it also leaves a message, 
if you become an adult, always keep in touch with some people older than you, like your uncle, for example, and have a lot of friends around you to give you some advice. Now, I think that's a really good message within the story. And another one is that it's really suspenseful. There's a lot of action and there's this moment where you're clenching your heart because these guys might die after all. And they, and we know and we've read this seri the series for four books now, we don't want the characters to die. And yeah, and, and, and it also ends with a cliffhanger, which is absolutely epic. Of course, it's like my sixth time reading The Prophecies Begin, so it's not really that much of a surprise to me. But if I read this book and it was the first time, that cliffhanger would have made me go absolutely crazy, especially if I didn't have book five in my hands right next to me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It is an epic book. The entire Rory saga is definitely worthwhile reading, and like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester, it is a great book, guys. And yeah, I highly recommend it. Read the saga.